What's up guys? In this video, I want to talk about something that a lot of plumbers or do-it-yourselfers don't take the time to do when running copper lines, or any type of pipe for that matter, and that's to deburr or ream the end of the pipe when it's been cut. So what exactly is deburring a pipe? Deburring is to remove the lip caused by a rotary cutter or handsaw after the cut using a deburring tool. When you cut a pipe with a rotary cutter like this one, no material is removed. Instead, it's displaced mostly inwards, but also a little bit outwards, leaving a lip or sharp edge on the outside and inside of the pipe. In any case, this sharp edge needs to be removed for many reasons, which I'll be going through later in the video. Now, you might be asking yourself why people don't take the time to do it despite it being in the plumbing code. The main reason why is the lack of understanding why it needs to be done and its importance. It's quite difficult to understand something that we can't see, so we tend to put it aside and just deal with the consequences in the long run. Also, it's a lot quicker and less demanding for a contractor to not do it and they could easily get away with it since it's a step that's slowly disappearing in the plumbing trade as time goes by. I got an animation made just so we could really see what happens inside the pipe with running water when a burr is left untouched, and all the negative impacts it could have on a system. But for now, let's talk about the deburring tools and how they must be used. There are different types of deburring and reaming tools you could get, and you'd have to test them all out yourself to know which one you prefer. The first one would be to use a flat or half-rounded file. These will get the job done, but it's not the most efficient method. Then, there's the pencil reamer. I really like the format and the way this reamer removes the lip, but I find it to be inconvenient because it only works for the inside of the pipe and not the outside. So what I tend to carry around with me is this $20 inner outer deburring tool that does multiple pipe sizes and it does the job just fine. If you're soldering for example, the outer edge doesn't necessarily need to be deburred. But if you're using SharkBite or ProPress fittings which rely on an O-ring to seal, the outer edge must be chamfered for it not to damage the fragile O-ring upon insertion. SharkBite actually sells a deburring tool just for this. Also, on a lot of copper cutters there's an inner reamer built in, so there's no need for you to buy a separate one if you plan on deburring the inside of the pipe only. And as usual, if you guys are looking to purchase anything I show in this video, it'll be linked down below. So how do I deburr a pipe? For those who haven't done it before, deburring is quite simple and easy to do. If you're using a file, make sure you get one that is half round on one side and flat on the other. The flat side will be used for the outer burr and the half round side for the inner burr just like this. This will allow for fittings with o-rings to be protected during insertion. The same technique applies when using the combo tool. Just rotate a few times till you get that clean chamfered edge. If you're using a pencil reamer, you need to circle around the pipe at least 3-4 times to completely remove the lip. You don't want to hold it like this, nor at a perfectly horizontal position. You want to give it a slight angle so the tip doesn't touch the inside of the pipe. If you hold it with a pronounced angle like this, you'll only remove the edge of the pipe and not the actual burr. And when done quickly, it only takes about 5 seconds to get a nice clean deburred edge. Also, you want to make sure that the shavings aren't going inside the pipe you're deburring, because they could clog small orifices. So always purge your lines once you're done, or better yet, if you can, deburr the pipe upside down so the filings fall out and don't go in the system. Alright, so why is it bad to leave a burr on a pipe? Well, the main reason is that it's not code, but why exactly? The first reason, which a lot of people don't understand, is turbulence. If you have a straight pipe with water flowing through it like this, 
the water will flow straight without any restrictions, which is totally normal and exactly what you want. But by leaving the burr on, it creates a jump or a hydraulic jump, which creates a small, constant whirlwind or vortex, which slowly erodes the pipe due to the velocity and causes a small pinhole downstream about one inch away from the fitting. This phenomenon is called erosion corrosion. It might seem drastic, but according to the CDA or Copper Development Association, this is the most common mistake to make which causes pinholes. Something else that causes turbulence is if you apply too much solder. It accumulates inside the fitting and creates a similar problem. So to avoid this phenomenon, it's important that the inside of the pipe remains at its full bore. The second reason is flow loss. Just imagine having a streamlined pipe and adding a barrier in the way. It'll restrict the flow. If you only have one joint, for example, that hasn't been deburred, it probably won't show. But on a system with 2000 plus joints, you might see a loss in performance. And lastly is noise. Once again, just imagine having a barrier on 2000 plus joints. Your system is bound to be a bit louder than it should because of all the extra movement of water inside the pipes. Deburring also applies to heating systems, drain pipes, and others. Here's a nice example of why plastic drain pipes need to be deburred after they've been cut. If they aren't, anything will snag on the burr on their way to the street and might cause blockage which is why it's important to take the extra time to remove all the shards of plastic left from the cut. Some plastic water distribution systems, such as AquaRise, ask that the outer edge is chamfered to be cold, as to not push all the glue onto the fitting and have dry spots that could cause leaks. So that pretty much covers it. I hope this video clarified why deburring is necessary and all the negative impacts it can have on a system if it's not done. And as always, if you guys learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And until the next one, thanks for watching.